Um, hello everyone, welcome to Questions and Reason. The sessions of the founder is the R baby. It's the R. Um, last time we were speaking about love and the money, right? That it's important to find somebody who's willing to build with you, who's willing to build you, who's willing to be built by you, because that's when it is what we call love, right? I know it's not a, an attribute that a lot of people are looking for now. They say love doesn't pay the bills and stuff like that. And yeah, you, you know the sayings, but that's when it's real, man, because you know that your partner will stick by you through and through, right? And families are glued together by that attribute. If we were family members because we can benefit something off of our family members then we, we wouldn't have families just as a lot of people are struggling to be in relationships maintain relationships and stuff like that right all right the media doesn't just have questions anymore it has questions and reason Um, I really would like to talk more about relationships but um, I just want to continue off of the opponent or the opposition side where we left off last time where we got cut off actually um, so when you're dealing with an opponent it's really vital to understand if the opponent has intelligence or not right so the idea that maybe one day we can stay on Mars is it is likely to happen why because we can study Mars its properties and its movements and stuff like that and we can also take what we learned on Earth and try to implement it there before there's a civilization. You get what I'm saying? And Mars as a planet is not an intelligent opponent. So, like I said, we can study its physical properties, its chemistry, and all those things. And with clever thought, experimentation, definitely we, we can be established there. But when you're dealing with an opponent that has intelligence, intelligence meaning it can think, it can move, its movement is not predictable. For example, I mean a cat, you can study the behavior of a cat or an animal that it likes doing one, two, three, four, but it is not really 100% predictable. You cannot really predict it that at this time of the day it will be doing one two three four yes we and other animals like habits but it is not guaranteed that it will happen so when you are dealing against an intelligent opponent the plan is not to get to is is not to uh, make sure that everything goes as we planned but we plan in a way that whatever happens we are in a better position than what we are now right markets can be predicted but human beings on the other hand cannot be predicted that is why it is much more difficult to work with people than with computers for example so somebody who's working with computers can just sit there even if they run into an issue like i said with clever thought and whatever research experimentation definitely they'll get it right but human beings are intelligent beings right so it will be very difficult to get them to do exactly how you want things to be done so you don't plan to what to execute it exactly 
you plan to get in a better position than you were in right same as events in in your life sometimes you plan things they don't work out the way you want but that doesn't mean you drop the plan it means that we re-strategize so that we can get into a better position than we were in a lot of people give up why because they are they they have a certain expectation and it really didn't go a hundred percent as it should i'm not saying settle for less i'm saying that if you evaluate for example it's december now right it's a new month and it's the end of the year when the year began you had some sort of a plan to say at the end of the year i want to see myself at this position now when you're looking back at the year you evaluate and you see that it really didn't go exactly the way that you thought it would and this is normal why because you are dealing with a lot of moving things a lot of events a lot of people a lot of factors that may maybe are predictable but you don't have the resources to be able to predict every single movement that will happen and some are not really predictable and even even with the all the resources in the world there's no way that you'll be able to predict what will happen because like i said you are dealing with what an intelligent being and an intelligent opponent is there to frustrate you in your plans that means that when you are doing one two three four it is there to stand in a way so that you cannot really reach that destination or you will reach it at a loss that you really didn't think that you will reach it in but the idea is to what is to always re-strategize yes things didn't go the way you planned or maybe they did to a certain extent but we keep moving forward right events that didn't go the way that you wanted to uh, them to go is now a chance for you to sit down and learn on how to do better in the coming year right so a lot of people will say ah oh, this guy they they made promises to us concerning one two three four but they never really delivered maybe they did deliver but to a certain extent why like i said because there's a lot of moving things that always try to frustrate your plan the idea is that you don't stop planning you don't stop re-strategizing just because things went south when you wanted them to go north doesn't mean that you give up christopher columbus what he was he looking for he read marco polo and was inspired by the genius of marco polo and his uh, nice documentation of china and he wanted to sail to china he wanted to see what marco polo has seen but where did he end up he ended up in the caribbeans somewhere in america right so things tend to be like that a lot of people or marco polo at the time might have looked at it and said oh maybe i failed but today we talk about i mean christopher columbus but today we we talk about christopher columbus because his plan of reaching uh the ends of the world actually happened but maybe it wasn't the idea that he thought that maybe he would you know run into the great emperor of china at the time but there's a lot of events that happened because of his planning that made him to be um, a history icon where 
when we talk about history, you talk about Christopher Columbus, whether we like him or not, or no matter how we feel about him, but he will always be quoted, right? So what I was trying to say is that his plan was not to reach the Caribbeans, but somehow going with what he planned made him to reach there and it made him an important man, right? Throughout, in Portugal, in Spain, he was an important man because of it, right? So it is the same thing. Maybe your plan was, you know, to get to the Caribbeans, but you find yourself in Africa. The question is, now that you are there, are you re-strategizing? Mm -hmm. Or are you gonna try and sail back and find China again? And that is somehow not um, economic. It's, it's not really something that you wanna maybe pursue at the time. You evaluate where you are now this December and you try to make the best out of where you are, right? So you don't get discouraged and say, oh, I'm in Africa, why am I here? I'm, I wasn't supposed to be here. Then you get frustrated and maybe, you know, get stressed and stuff like that. Sometimes we plan so that we can what? We can end up in our places of destiny. So it's always good to plan, whether things go according to plan or not whether you are fighting an intelligent opinion or, not, or, or an opponent or not you keep on planning you keep on re-strategizing right a lot of people thought when russia invaded ukraine that uh it will just be like this right because russia has a huge military and is a nuclear power so they thought it will happen quickly but they fail to understand that you are dealing against intelligent opponents. Some might run away, some might surrender, but there'll be those that will try to frustrate your plan. And that's what we've seen. I mean, it went on and on, and now we are at a point where nobody's winning and everybody's losing because once a war stretches for a long time, everybody's losing so what i'm trying to tell you is that plan always be planning always be strategizing like um people who are in a gorilla warfare they are always re-strategizing why because they don't have a lot of resources they don't have a lot of men, they don't have a lot of guns. So this requires them to always be planning, always be thinking, always be strategizing to say, wait, we don't have enough men, we don't have enough resources. How do we get to a better position than what we were or than where we are now? Be like that. Even when you have a lot of resources, don't stop planning. Planning is vital. Don't look at a plan as some sort of, you know, it has to happen 100% the way that you want. But look at it as a way to say, with this plan, I will be able to get to what? A better position than where I am. All right. So, yeah, on the other subject that I wanted to talk about, I want to talk about grief, right? Grief is something that, especially in the black community, we don't deal with. We don't deal with traumas, we don't deal with grief. We, we, be, we actually believe that things like, um, what's the psychologist and psychiatrist and all these people who are supposed to be treating these mental issues, we look at them as for white people, like, Black people don't get stressed. Black people don't be depressed. There's a lot of black people with depression, but because there's no one to diagnose that, they don't know that they're depressed, right? So 
you find yourself harboring depression and passing it to other people and i had a lot of people suggesting that um people should do ayahuasca to relieve stress and listen man um and yeah they there was a suggestion that like ayahuasca is a way to tap into the spirit ayahuasca is hallucination it's high that's 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 what i want to say just like mushrooms mm? i i believe that we spoke a little bit about psych psychedelics um yeah you should, if if you don't follow my videos just go through sessions with the founder you will see the reason why uh things like uh, psychedelics were introduced when you hallucinate you are not spiritual you are high if hallucination is spiritual then the nyaope people are the most spiritual people on earth right but we only hate nyaope because of the effects that it has mm? if ayahuasca had bad effects on your health on your body we would have had the same issues against ayahuasca but it is high whether it doesn't affect your health or not it is still high it is not spiritual what is being spiritual being spiritual is being able to tap into a realm that is not of this world that doesn't um was this satisfy the flesh that doesn't please the flesh right how do we tap into this world it is things like your anger the fact that you are holding a grudge against a colleague the fact that you don't have a pure heart you don't have best intentions for people you are trying to scheme you are trying those are the things that you know stop people from what from being able to experience a spiritual a spiritual realm but it is really not difficult to tap into the spirit right tapping into the spirit but being able to enjoy your spiritual life as every human being we are supposed to have a spiritual life but science told us that we are not spiritual beings we just going to die one day and be buried and that's it that's the end of us right but i want to tell you you are a spiritual being right when if you are a spiritual being you are supposed to have spiritual experiences in your life and being high is not one of them it's not a spiritual experience it's high just like cocaine just like mushrooms just like nyaope and what if you are high you are high and just because you're hallucinating doesn't mean that you are experiencing the spiritual realm like i said get rid of your anger get rid of the grudge that you hold against people get rid of hatred and things that stop you from experiencing what is out there right things that stop you from experiencing the spiritual you you are a spirit you live in a body and one day you're going to leave that body you don't want to get to know yourself once you depart with your body get to know yourself now right and like i said it is the negative energies in our lives that is stopping us from being being what being spiritual i'm not sure how we got here what was i talking about um i was talking about um uh, i forgot so there's a difference between being high and being spiritual but strive for the spiritual strive for the spiritual where you get to actually have a vision or a trance or a dream not hallucination 
when you have a vision, a dream, and a trance, it it you will understand what spiritual means. A lot of us dream, but we forget our dreams in the morning. You need to fight that because as a spiritual being, your spirit will always try to direct you on where you are supposed to be going or on what is happening around you that uh, you can tap into. Just like privacy invading technologies, right? If you don't know what private invading te uh, privacy invading technology is, it's simply what governments use to spy on us or what big companies use the data that they collect from us that we're not even aware of right so it is the same thing your spirit can actually what can actually tell you about the surroundings what's going on around you what people are planning what people are doing so you you don't get surprised like everybody else if you are a christian you would understand that i mean it's not christians only i believe that noah is the islam believes in noah uh, judaism believes in noah, in noah and so forth noah was never shocked about the flood while everybody else was shocked he wasn't that's why he he prepared a boat and because he was spiritual he was able to foresee things this is not for special people a lot of people will say this is for the prophets no it's it's, it's for everybody everybody is a spiritual being right you can be able to tap into it and you people are going to look at you and think you're insane why do you think when Noah was building a boat and it's hot and this is a huge boat people thought they must have thought he was crazy to say I mean why do you want to waste your time building a boat that you're never gonna use right so the things that you're gonna do when you're a spiritual being a lot of people are not gonna understand you why because spiritually spiritual things are spiritually descent a person of the flesh will never be able to understand you you will always puzzle them so what i'm trying to say is you need to work on tapping into the spirit and this means letting go of your worry letting go of your stress finding a way to overcome finding a way to not to hold grudges against people people are fickle they're weak they are bound to disappoint you they are bound to hurt you they are bound but you are supposed to always come out on top how do we come out on top this means you don't have grudges you don't fight when they want you to fight and that helps you to be able to experience yourself that is what we call being sober being sober means that you are able to receive information in the spiritual. All right. So I feel like this is all I have time for today. Like, subscribe, talk to your friends about it. This is your boy, Mr. R. We will talk more about tapping into your spirit nature. Oh, I remember we were speaking about grief. All right. So what I'll do is I will do um, concepts where we break down grief, where we break down uh, being able to overcome the things that stop you from having a spiritual experience. And I promise you, once you, you tap into the spiritual experience, no amount of high will ever deceive you as it being spiritual because you know what spiritual is all right it's your boy mr r i'm out <laughs>